Okay, this is a fairly short video on how to perform F5 LTM automated backups and grab some CLI output and send it to your SFTP server without using passwords. And there are three basic steps. Step one, set up the automated login using shared keys between the client and the server. The client being the LTM in this case, and the server, my CentOS 7 host. Step two, create your shell script to perform backups and other related tasks. Step three, create your cron job to schedule the script to run at your desired intervals. So let's get to it. The document on my left outlines step one of the process, the shared key process. And I also add a few uh, extra commands at the top. Uh, so we could verify what version of operating system we're running. The top window on my right is my LTM window, and you can see with the TM shell show sys version command verifies we're at version 10.2.3. The bottom window for my CentOS 7 host, we can also see where we are definitely running CentOS 7. All right, step one. Let's create a user on the CentOS side that's dedicated for this process. And it's attempt to create a username that will be easy to find and sticks out easily as a functional account. Uh, this is especially important if something comes up out of the network and you need to locate who this user is. Okay, um, let's create a user called F5 Backup on our CentOS host. Great. Step two, let's run the SSS keygen uh, command on both the LTM appliance and the CentOS host. I will go into I won't go into a big discussion about this and what and what you can get away with because it's a whole different topic and get drawn out. Okay. On the LTM appliance. <clears throat> Say yes, it won't hurt anything. Enter, enter again. We don't need a password on that uh, for the passphrase. Okay, now for the um, CentO side, we actually need to log in as the F5 backup user before we run the command. Enter, enter, enter again. Good there. Now let's, uh, as in step three, let's SSH from the LTM to the CentOS host and accept a fingerprint and then log out. All right, good there. Now I'm going to exit back out of that SSH session and get back to my root LTM prompt. Okay, step four, copy the shared key from the client, which is the LTM in this case, to the CentOS.SSH directory for the F5 backup user. And let's make sure we're in the right directory. We're in slash root slash dot SSH, but we want to be in just slash root. CD dot dot, back where we need to be. And let's uh, transfer the shared key to the CentOS host. Transfer, right, transferring the file was successful. That's good. Step five, test SSH and verify that we are not prompted for password authentication. And it did work. Notice I started out with rooted LTM for my prompt. Now I'm at F5 backup at CentOS 7. So we'll exit out of that and get back to the LTM side. Step six, of course, if SSH works, then so FTP, SFTP or SCP, it's the same family. But let's test it just to be safe. 
There we go. Type in buy to get out of that. Back to the LTM prompt. Okay. Now let's jump to uh, step two and three. We're going to create our shell script. And let me briefly uh, mention a few notes about this script. I'm not a heavy scripter. I'm a network slash security slash F5 guy. I like my scripts short, simple, and easy to modify in the future if needed. Uh, I think a lot of you will agree. So there's a couple of variables up top, self-explanatory. The now variable lets me append today's date and time to any file I want. Some very basic cleanup here where I remove any existing files from the slash var slash temp directory. These files will be created again in just a moment. The tm shell show sys connection command will display all current connections going through the box from a tmos standpoint. The next command is b config save. It's going to save and create a UCS archive in the var slash temp directory called ltm backup and append today's date and time. Now, let me say here, this is important. Um, I recommend always running tm shell commands if possible. The issue here is that on 10.2, the tm shell save sys config command does work, but the file parameter is not there yet. So if you're on version 10x, use the b config save command. If you're on 11x or above, use the tm shell command. And of course, a little more housekeeping in here, straightforward stuff. Let's jump to it. On the ltm side, Let's make sure we're in the slash root directory. Let's call the file uh, f5backup.sh and you can use vi, vim, nano, whatever works for you. I for input. Let's copy all this. Shift colon wq to write and quit out. chmod 7 Five, five, whoops, to make the script executable. Great. Now let's also do or perform a manual test of the script before we create a cron job for it, just to verify it's working correctly. And I'm going to look at my slash var slash temp directory first to see what's in there. Uh, let me remove those files from the previous run before we begin. Okay, the slash var slash temp directory is empty. We are still in slash root. And let's run the script. Okay, great. It appears to be successful. Let's verify. You can see the files were just created. Uh, Connections.txt and LTM backup.ucs, the F5 LTM archive. Of course, my date says PST. It should be CST, but the time is correct and lines up 902, 902. Now let's look at the CentOS side and see if the files were actually transferred over there. We are in the home slash F5 backup directory. Files are there. I even look at one to verify it worked correctly, and it did. This is a lab box for my OTM, so I do not have anything going through it. But if I did, that would appear here. You can see it says total records returned zero. So it did function correctly. And just so you can see what that looks like from the OTM side, and verify is correct. Here's what that looks like. Same data return. Okay, so the script appears to work correctly. Let's see. Our third and final step is to create a cron job and schedule the script to run at the desired intervals. On the LTM side, cron tab dash E. Oop, I better write that over here for everybody. Okay, now I already have the variables in here from earlier. This remote user equals root 
may not be needed on your system. On the 10.2 code, uh, there's a separate issue and you need to put that variable there. So, say shift colon Q to get out of that. It should be run every five minutes. Let me verify this again. Let me show you this. This particular cron job is scheduled to run every five minutes. Only because I'm in a lab and I want to make sure I see the results right away for testing purposes. In real life, you probably want to run this, say, at 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. on a Sunday morning or Monday morning. Something like that. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go clean up. <clears throat> Any files in the current var temp? And let's also clean them up in the CentOS 7 box so that we can verify the cron job is kicking off correctly. Nothing there on our CentOS 7 box and the F5 backup directory. Okay, let's give it a few minutes. Let me remember where I'm at. Okay, not yet. Should be there any moment. All right, a few minutes have passed and let's check one more time to see if there's been any activity. Oh, I see the connections file and the UCF Ar UCS archive in our var slash temp directory. Let's pop down to the CentOS 7 box and see what's in here. Oh, two files there. So they did transfer successfully, we believe. Let me look at one to make, be absolutely certain. And there it goes. Um, once again, this is a lab box for me. My OTM is in a lab and I have no current connections going through it. Um, and just so you can see there is the correct output. If I run this command on my lab appliance, see total records return zero, same data as below. And this concludes our walkthrough. Thank you.